Welcome to Balanced Life with Debbie Carlin Boyle, conversations connecting to a healthier you, the show that gives you all the latest and greatest health and wellness information to inspire you to live a life of balance and joy. Debbie Carlin Boyle is a health and nutrition coach, personal trainer, and fitness instructor who helps her clients live in balance with everything that feeds us in addition to the food on our plate. Please welcome your host, Debbie Carlin Boyle. Well, hello there, and welcome, everybody. Welcome. Good afternoon or good evening. My guest is on the East Coast, so good evening for those that are watching over there. Um, thank you for joining me today. This is Balanced Life, conversations that connect to a healthier you. I'm your host. I'm Debbie Carlin Boyle, and I am a health coach, a nutrition coach, a fitness instructor, and a personal trainer. I like to help people find balance in their life with everything, everything that we need to be interconnected to a better self. And that's why I do the show, so I can connect you to the people that are doing wonderful things for you to live a life of joy and a life of pain-free and longevity. So uh, if you want to work with me, you can go to my website, which is balancelifebydebbie.com. And right there, you'll see all of the wonderful things that I do. I have group sessions. I work with people individually. And as we come out of these uh, lockdown times and things are starting to open again and people are starting to take in, literally take a breath of fresh air, I'm here to help you get back to where you were or maybe you want to get started for the first time. So go ahead to Balance Life by Debbie. Go to Connect and fill in your information, hit Send, and I'm going to get right back to you. And I give one hour free session, so just get in touch when you get a chance. I also want to remind you that um, I'm conversations that connect to a healthier you, but I'm interactive, and I want you to join us if you can. So if you have a question or a comment or anything you want to say during the show and you're listening live, the number here is 323-524-2599. That's 323-524-2599. Just give us a call. If you're not listening live, then you want to make a comment or ask a question, you can go to my Facebook page, Balance Life by Debbie, where I'm streaming there live as well, and you can make a comment anytime, and I or my guest will get back to you. The other way to get in touch is on my YouTube channel. It will be up on YouTube at the end of the day, and that's Balance Life by Debbie. So go there, see all all the wonderful content I have on health and wellness, all the guests and products and things to help you again live a life of longevity with quality and just hit subscribe while you're there. All right, we're going to get on with the show. I think you're going to be excited about this show today today, because it applies to everybody, no matter who you are. So have you ever wondered how your personality style can drive your success and happiness? Well, my guest today is an expert on the power of personality and is here to break down behavior styles and tell us how to identify our own and others. Merrick Rosenberg has been the co-founder of Team Builders Plus since 1991 and the CEO of Take Flight Learning since 2012. He is the author of Personality Wins, The Chameleon, and Taking Flight, three books about personality. Under Merrick's leadership as CEO of Take Flight Learning, his company has been selected as the New Jersey Business of the Year and named one of the fastest growing companies and best places to work in the Philadelphia area. Merrick received his MBA from Drexel University, who recognized him as as the Alum Entrepreneur of the Year. Merrick has worked with more than half the Fortune 100 companies in the U.S. and around the world. All right, so let's get ready to learn all about yourself and those around you. So will you please welcome my guest to the show, Merrick Rosenberg. Thank you, Deb. Thank you. Hello. How are you? I am here and ready to have some fun today. I can see that. I can see that. Um, I'm so glad that you had the time to do this. I reached out to you because I love what you do, and I think it applies to everybody. And it's kind of exciting to figure out, you know, what kind of personality you have and then try to work and in, in, in not guess, but sort of identify with others. And it does change the quality of life, I would think, once you know this information. 
So we're going to get into all of what you do. We're going to break it down. We're going to um, let people try to discover who they are through the four birds. Um, but first, I want to hear a little bit about you, your background, and how you got into all of this, into uh, personality styles and, and identification in the first place. Well, going back to 1991, I founded one of the first team building companies in the United States. At the time, there were literally about a half a dozen team building organizations. And it didn't take long to figure out that personality is the cause of a lot of conflict within groups of people. And so I learned how to use personality styles and really use them as a team building tool for many years, for about 15 years. But what I found was that people were learning these letters and colors and they just weren't remembering them. I'd go back six months later and they're like, wait, what is, which letter am I again? What does that mean? And I thought, all right, we've got to reinvent this. We have to make it more visual, more tangible, more sticky, so that when people learn about the styles, they can really apply them in your life. Because if you can't remember it, you can't apply it. So my goal was just to make it simple so people could learn them and use them every day. So what drew you to this um, to this profession in the first place? Was it something that struck you in college? Was it something that when you were in a corporation, you realized that was the center of conflict? So you wanted to be the leader yeah. in helping people discover? Some, how, go ahead. Sometimes we learn from the opposite example. And I, I was reporting to a manager in my very first job. Okay. And without mentioning names, let's just say he wasn't the the greatest leader one could imagine. And, you know, he really micromanaged and he he just was very abrasive and he created a culture that was fairly toxic. And I said, this just has, this can't be right. There has to be a better way. And uh, that prompted me to go back and get an MBA and just study how to create a great culture for organizations. What does it mean to be a great leader? So sometimes we are inspired by greatness. Other times we see the opposite and say, I don't want to do that. Yes. And that's actually what happened for me. Yes. Okay. That's what I was trying to get to. Yes. Because that's usually the thing that pushes us into the field that becomes our passion work, you know, is what we do, whether it's something that we see, you know, somebody on stage and we want to perform like them or something in my life that I saw, which was a lot of illness at a very young age within my family and said, I don't want to be like this, you know, and that's what propelled me into what I do. So that's why I asked, because I wanted to see which it was and, and what made you. But I, I suspected it was a toxic environment of some kind yeah. for you. And, and I, ironically, I went and worked at a team building company when I was in graduate school. And I thought, like, I could work at a team building firm. This would be amazing. And they had the most toxic environment as well. And I'm like, OK, if they can be this successful and this toxic, I could do that. Yeah. And I'm going to create a great environment where people love working. So, and it's just been that way ever since. It's, it's an amazing feeling to go into a company and to help them transform that culture. And, and you know, because we bring that back home to our lives too. If you work in an environment that isn't comfortable, you take that home with you. But if you work in an environment where it feeds your passion, you bring that home also. And think about how that impacts your family and your children. Big time. Oh, big time. So, and, and then, so you kept, you wanted this to be your career path and you, but when did, so you decided to simplify it by breaking down to these four birds. Can we talk about the birds and go through them, what they're, um, what, the, what the birds are? I mean, we can visually see what they are, but also talk about what they represent personality Absolutely. style wise. And they should be pretty simple too. I mean, if I were to say to you, picture someone who's an eagle, they have the energy of an eagle. What what does that conjure up for you? Like when you leadership, think big, you yeah. know, stepping up, very organized, very uh, sort of commanding, a commander. Yeah, exactly. Right. Results oriented, bottom line, direct and decisive. And, there and you is. can see for parrots, they're positive, they're enthusiastic, they're optimistic, and they're social. That's uh, me. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, pic picture a parrot. It, for them, it's just like, it's all good. It always works out. Life is good. What could, what could go wrong? Uh, and if you were to picture a dove, you probably picture someone who's very harmonious and caring. I mean, they're the symbols of peace and harmony all throughout the world. So for someone who has that dove style, they're caring, they're compassionate. And, and the last one is the owl. And you can see they're detail oriented. If you give something to an owl, they're going to do it right. They have a plan and a process. They ask tons of questions. They're very analytical. So we're not just one of them. We're a combination of all four, but there's probably one or two 
which are like home base for you. Yeah, that, are that really stand cool. out, that are, you're like more like three-fourths of and maybe a quarter of something else. Can you be more than, can, you can be a combination of maybe all four in some ways, the way you handle. Because yeah. well, I know that, you know, different situations require you to handle, and not that you shift your personality, but you do have to handle different other personalities differently. So you might shift into one of the other birds just so you can, like in a leadership, being a teacher and being a leader, there are people that I work with that are, you know, that are leaders of me. So I have to shift back and be a different personality, you know, kind of, you know what I'm saying? So Absolutely right. But we adjust. We're not just one of them, we're a combination of them. And cer certain situations require certain styles. If you were teaching someone how to use a new piece of equipment, you might put your owl hat on and be very specific. Mm -hmm. But if you're celebrating something with somebody, be a parrot, be happy, you know, congratulate them. You don't need all the details of every last moment of exactly what they did. Just be excited. They succeeded. And so we put on that hat for what is needed in the moment. So, um, and, and it's important you, you touched on it in the very beginning, but it's important to know who you are and be able to understand how other people are so we can deal with them in more diplomatic ways, more empathetic ways, more. Why, are all, why is it important, I guess, is what I'm asking. First of all, the most self-aware people are the happiest people. Mm -hmm. They are the most successful people. Mm -hmm. they, they find a job that they're their strengths shine. They get in relationships where they understand the other person, where they understand themselves. They don't impose their personality on other people. And that's really the big core issue is that if we don't understand ourselves, then we are destined to imposing our personality on others. We try to turn them into the best version of who we are instead of honoring who they are. Right. And that's so and so you ha uh, you shouldn't try to change somebody's personality. Um, we're going to get into parenting and relationships, like uh, of significant others and and friend relationships. We're going to break that down, but you shouldn't ever um, try to bring to change somebody out of their personality style to to um, make to kind of satisfy you, right? You, you need to understand where they're coming from. That's a big reason probably why this is important, what you're saying. So right. you don't want somebody to be, I think you have a term called like flex, being like a flexible, trying to make somebody flexible to come your way. Is that what it is? Or Absolutely. It's like being, I always say you're being the chameleon. You're being that flexible, adaptable chameleon. So if I were talking to someone who is an owl, they're very detail oriented. They're very specific. They want things to be perfect and right. But I'm the parrot and I'm just like, <clears throat> here you go. Here's your goal, go for it. Well, that's probably not enough information for the owl. As the parrot, I think I'm empowering you. I'm motivating you. I'm encouraging you to solve it and think for yourself. Meanwhile, the owl feels lost. And, and the reason we do that is we're trying to help others, but we don't realize when we impose our personality on them, it's not helpful at all. In fact, it can frustrate people. And that's where conflict comes in. Is there so um, with the companies that you work and you that you work with and you go in, um, do do they take a test or do they just identify themselves right away, like I just did and said I'm a parrot? I mean, or do they have to take a sure. test to really break it down, kind of like the, the beauty of the styles is you can look at your style and say, okay, <clears throat> I understand my style. I can look at this. I can see I'm the parrot. But we do have an assessment. People go online. They take a profile. They evaluate who they are. They get a report back, which tells you, okay, you're a, I'm a parrot with a secondary eagle. Uh, and it gives you a graph. And you know it, it describes your strengths and your challenges, your fears, your motivators, how you communicate. Uh, it gives you tons of information about who you are. And once people have that information, how do they apply it? I mean, like, is there uh, a recommendations on your end that you put them through um, a course of, or so, to, so they can apply? Now you know who you are. You kind of recognize yourself. Now how can you stop yourself from trying to, you know, make somebody something else that they're not? Or how can you 
keep yourself from the conflict knowing now who you are from any exactly that's exactly what we do people will go through training programs that we deliver and they learn about the, their own style so first step you got to understand yourself okay second step can i read the styles of others so okay i know my style but can i read your style can i figure out what your style is very quickly and then the third step is once i know myself and i know you now i need to be able to flex and adapt to your style so that i don't impose my personality on you i love that i think that's so cool and i think it's so cool because you can like you know since i've been researching you and uh you know that knew that we were doing the show together I'm going around and everybody I'm talking to, even my kids or whoever I'm coming in contact with, I'm like, oh, they're, they're an owl, they're, you know, they're a parrot too, you know, and maybe that's why. I mean, do two styles, I mean, or like, you know, like how in um, astrology, certain signs get along better with other signs. Do certain right. personality styles complement other personality styles? And are uh, other personality styles, are they, you know, uh, at combat with each other? Do you know? Yeah, it, it's interesting. I saw a study recently that 86% of people are attracted to their personality opposite. So eagles and doves, that big energy, confident eagle, the soft-spoken, caring, compassionate dove, they tend to be in relationships and get married more often. The parrots and the owls tend to get married most often. And so it's, oh. it really is true that, that opposites attract. In fact, I was writing an article about this a few years ago and I thought, I wonder like, if I go back to classic television couples, is the, will we see this? Will we see the doves and the eagles married? Will we see the parrots and the owls? I, I pulled, pulled, first list I pulled up on Google, 20 out of 20 of the top TV couples Every one of them was either an eagle dove couple or a parrot and owl couple, 20 out of 20. And, and it's fun because you watch it, it creates the, that dynamic tension in the relationship and that's fun to watch. Uh, it also makes it interesting for us in real life too. Well, I have a question for you, but we have to take a quick break. And when we come back, I have a question relating to what you just said. So we'll be right back after this word from one of my sponsors. I have been a wine enthusiast for many decades. But for a while, I had to stop drinking wine because of the sleepless nights and the headaches that I would have in the morning, even after only one glass. Does this sound familiar? So for the past five years, and since the start of my show, I've been looking for a healthy wine. And finally, I found the answer I've been looking for. Dry Farm Wines. Dry Farm Wines are lab tested for purity, just 12.5% alcohol or less, 0.15 grams of sugar or less per glass very low sulfites, and free of toxic additives. Dry farm wines are dry farmed with healthy, biodiverse soil, and the taste, bright and vibrant, due to no manipulation. I can't say enough about the amazing wines that I've tried, and now you too can drink wine and not worry about how it is negatively affecting your health. Just go to dryfarmwines.com forward slash balanced life by Debbie so you too can taste the love put into every bottle. Okay, we're back. We're back with my guest, Merrick Rosenberg. He is an expert on personality and personality styles, and we're just sort of now getting into uh, the relationship uh, talk about personality styles. Um, and from what we uh, were talking about right before we went to break, I had a thought on whether or not um, you could, do, do you think, like you're saying, you know, you found out that opposites attract, you know, in relationships, um, mostly, uh, do you, can you manipulate or maneuver your style to be, if you're not, let's say happy with it, or you want to be, I mean, is it difficult for someone who is a dove to become an eagle? even though I know we overlap different styles, but let's say they want to be in a leadership role. Can, is that, are we, I guess what I'm asking is, are we born with a very specific style and can we manipulate it to something else? Well, think about this. If you were acting out of your style, it would be exhausting. So it, really the goal isn't to say, okay, I need to be somebody else. I should change my style. Because if you do that, you're just trading one set of strengths and weaknesses for another set of strengths and weaknesses. And, and the big thing to recognize is 
anybody can be an amazing leader. If you take, I'll give you four examples, one from each style. Self-made billionaires, someone like a, a Jeff Bezos, Eagle, Richard Branson, Parrot, Bill Gates, Owl, somebody like a, uh, a Howard Schultz from Starbucks, Dove, somebody mm -hmm. like Oprah, who could display all four of them equally well. Look, here's self-made billionaires, all different styles. There's no need to change your style. Your, your style doesn't determine how successful you'll be. It, it does determine how you go about being successful. But whoever you are, that's fine. It, you can be incredibly successful. Style's not going to drive whether you are or are not successful. Okay, that's what I was curious about. And are we born? Well, I have a new granddaughter who's just seven months old, not even. So I'm already kind of, since I was reading about you, I'm already assessing her style. Are we born with our style? Oh yeah, you can, the dominant. you can tell within months, absolutely. I, I have one son who's a parrot. I have one son who is an owl. My my owl child, you know those bouncy seats that go and you, you hang them up in a doorway? Yes, we're doing owl, that now. <laughs> yes, my owl child, he sits in the, he, when he was a little baby, he would bounce very rhythmically up and down, up and down. I put my parrot child into this and he steps back and he pulls back like five feet. And then all of a sudden he launches forward at like five G's. And we're like, what is he doing? <laughs> <laughs> he's just a baby. I mean, he's just a toddler at this point. You can see their style. Yeah, he's a daredevil with a lot of enthusiasm. So my my granddaughter, the same scenario. So we have one of those. My daughter, I don't say we, my daughter has one of those. I babysit quite a bit. Um, she gets in it and she's bouncing. She squats as low as she can and bounces as high as she can. Now, she doesn't pull back, but she bounces up and down. She's literally dancing and laughing her head off. So I'm assuming she's a parrot. She probably already you can tell has some parrot energy when okay you, you see doves they very carefully they, they're very gentle you hand them something they take it from you very softly you if i were to hand a toy to my owl child when he was just a toddler he would take it he would turn it all around and analyze it and try to understand it even when he was five years old he'd walk by with a screwdriver and i'd say where are you going and he'd look at me like Nothing, like nothing good can come from that. <laughs> uh, you're right. That side <laughs> eye, no. There's, you're up to something. We know that. So <laughs> since we're talking about parenting, why don't we talk about that a little bit and how um, to identify your child and how we can use it as parents and also knowing the style of your spouse um, or the other person that is parenting with you. How can we use it to our advantage to really help our children thrive? This is one of the most incredible applications of the styles. It's funny to me because I live in the world of corporate America. That's where we deliver training programs. And yet during breaks or if I speak at a conference, people come up to me and ask more questions about their spouse or their children, even though I just gave a talk about leadership or creating a great culture. They, this is what they want to know about. And think about what I was saying a moment ago, which is we impose our style on others. Imagine an eagle parent conveying the message to a dove child, you need to be more assertive. Mm. You need to be take charge in this world or people are going to step on you. You better fight for what you want. But the underlying message to that child is if you were more like me, I would love you, but you're going to have to change if you want oh, me to accept who you that's are. That's devastating. That's yeah, devastating. It's honoring them. And right. that's how a parent needs to use this. You've got to understand your style, know who you are, and then bring out the best in who your child is. Don't try to make them into the best version of you. They may be very different from you. In fact, they probably are. Help them and nurture their natural style instead of trying to change them. Yeah, I would think that's more of a sort of today and age th awareness as opposed to, I mean, I grew up in, I was born in the 50s and grew up in the 60s and 70s. And my parents were, I mean, they just didn't have a clue, you know, they were more like, just go out and be successful, be, you know, they were sort of telling me what to do, not working with me with any passions or anything that I could nurture that they, they saw that I was grabbing onto. It was more about what it is that they wanted for me. And I think a lot of kids from my generation had similar parents, basically because of the way they were parented too. So I can I see how this can be that shift can be very valuable 
to um, to our youth and as they grow up and to and understand. Imagine the connection and the relationship you have with your child when you're honoring who they are, when you're yeah. helping to nurture their natural gifts. It, it, they just feel like you were there for them their entire childhood and you supported them and celebrated them. And that's how they grow to be healthy adults when you honor and support your children and don't try to change them into somebody else. Right. I mean, I've had, I've done so many shows about uh, trauma and sort of PTSD from something that happened in your childhood. And ultimately, a lot of these discussions get back to the way they were parented. You know, what happened, you know, people, we, we did a show, I have a, a woman that, uh, attorney Flum that I'm doing a series with, she works with, um, she's a somatic healer, she works from healing people from the inside out, because they have physical pain, but when she gets into it, she realizes that the physical pain is actually something, is an emotional pain, and it stems from their childhood, and I would say nine times out of ten, it's coming from a parent. Yeah, those, something those traumatic yeah those emotional scars they represent themselves somewhere in your body and and imagine if you had parents who just honored you and and by knowing the styles you can say okay i'm more of an owl parent i've got a parrot child and then they're trying and that owl parent is trying to get that child to be organized and structured and maybe not talk so much all the time yeah but what are you doing you're saying hey if you were more like an owl that i would love but this parrot thing, that's not working for me. And, and we really have to understand ourselves. Otherwise, we're just destined to impose our style on the people around us. Right, right. And, and yeah, because you, you were, I, I think you have like a, um, you have that home rule that you talk about. Will you talk about what that home rule is? Because it's kind of interesting because it's counter um, intuitive to what we think is like do unto others as you would do unto you. Um, or, or what you would assume that how you want to be treated, other people, you should treat other people that way. But that's not necessarily true, you're saying, if, because people are coming from different personality styles, and we have to know that more than thinking that they should be treated the way we think they should be treated. Absolutely. So if you think of the golden rule, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Uh, I'm not going to invalidate it, but I'm going to give you the opposite of it, which is instead of treating others how you would want to be treated, which is a more modern way of saying the golden rule, how about we treat others the way they need to be treated? So if I'm talking to an eagle, be direct, get right to the point. If I am talking to a dove, soften your voice, connect with them on an emotional level. If I'm talking to a parrot, dial up the energy, dial up the enthusiasm. The more excited you are, the more excited they are. If I'm talking to an owl, provide detail and structure and information. And it's treating them the way they want to be treated because just like the golden rule, you're honoring them. You know, the golden rule applies to virtues like honesty and fairness mm -hmm. and integrity. Absolutely treat people how you'd want to be treated. What I call the home rule is also valuing and res respecting others, treat them how they need to be treated. Need to be treated need to be yeah, it's not is just it, a want the, not it's yeah the, that's the key word right need. there i like that the need yeah. to be, and that's an interesting approach um uh, yeah i like that because i think that also applies to parenting it also applies to relationships it also applies to the workplace you know um environment is so important whether it's home environment your school environment your learning environment or your career environment having a harmonious surrounding a place that you know emotionally that you can take a deep breath and feel like this feels good is so important to health and longevity and uh you know you're helping people create these environments by understanding individuals not the work not the work not the um not what you're actually learning in school or not the physical work that you're doing on the job but how you're dealing with others and yourself your approach to the job is what's where the harmony comes from. It's such yeah. an interesting concept for me. Absolutely. And, and, you know, whether you're applying this at home or at work, if I'm a manager and I'm, I'm, I have a variety of people on my team, I may have to manage them very differently. If I have two children, anyone who has two kids knows what worked with one child does not work with the other child. Mm -mm. And so what does it mean? It means I have to think about who am I talking to? 
How do I treat them? I, I think my style, I'm a parrot. I've got some eagle. I'm a secondary eagle. Uh, my parents needed to be more direct with me. If they were as direct with me as they were to my sister, who's the dove style, she would burst into tears. Mm-hmm. And they needed to soften the approach. If they weren't trying to correct her or guide her, they couldn't be as blunt and direct with her. It just didn't work. And, and that's, that's what we need to think about as parents. We need to be thinking about as spouses. We, the idea of fairness isn't treating everybody the same. It's treating people the way they need to be treated. Yeah. Oh, I love that. I love that line. Yeah. And that's what we're re- that's what I'm realizing in studying your styles that that's we have to meet them where they're at and understand where we're at, too. And like I said, you know, I started thinking about my kids and they're both, you know, have two girls. They're only three years apart from each other, but they're they're completely different one is a parrot like me and one is uh, I more of an eagle and so um she doesn't get anybody she doesn't get why people don't see things like her you know and why and she'll take a stand and take the leadership role and even though she likes to have fun she's very um she's very uh step up and take over the scene you know, and my younger one is Big more results is, driven. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And she'll find she'll always wherever environment she's in, she'll always strive to be. I don't even know if she's doing it consciously, actually, but she'll always strive to be the best, whether she, when she her waitressing days, she was always the best, you know, the one that took on the leadership role that the other waitresses wanted to emulate or now as a yoga instructor um, and studio manager and yoga retreat that she does, she just steps up, you know, and then she expects people to fall into place and be like yeah. her. So I see that. Where's yeah, my- Yeah, they're competitive, right? Because eagles don't just compete with other people, they compete with themselves. They go to the gym, they don't necessarily compare whatever to what everybody else is doing. They're comparing an older version of themselves, maybe from last week, that they want to beat. Oh, they want, interesting. They want to win. They want to achieve. Ah, okay. But yeah. Your younger, your younger daughter probably is such a different personality. She's a parrot. She's me. Yeah. And, and actually kind of a parrot and an owl. She's a combination of a parrot, owl, and dove. But she's more of a parrot. She's enthusiastic. She's outgoing. She's got a great personality. She's funny, you know, just real cute and effervescent. But she's very meticulous about her work. And she's back in school. She, she, um, my kids are in their 30s. And she's back in school for the company is paying for her to take a course at Cornell right now. She's in management. And she's meticulous of a creative company. And so she manages creative teams. And she's so meticulous about getting the work done and making sure she's very graph oriented and charts and numbers and it um it, and her room is spotless her house her kitchen i mean just nothing notice, nothing out of place yeah, notice how you get these interesting combinations so you can see the parrot energy and enthusiasm but you can also see the owl logic and structure and organization and that's that's it that's the power of the birds is that so quickly you can look at somebody and go, I get it. I yeah. can see this in them. I can see this in them. I can see this person totally different. And, and that's the beauty of what we're talking about is you can learn how to read people very quickly. And once you learn that, now you can flex them. And now, yeah, exactly. And that's kind of what I've had to do throughout their lives, not knowing what I was doing, but meet them at where they're at, knowing their personalities, knowing what to say, not to say, how to say it, when to say it, how to, where the diplomacy comes in and who I can tell different things to in a different tone or maybe not even say, talk about that issue at all. Because I know who's going to bite my head off and who's going to be more empathetic, you know. So, you know, like you yeah. said, we get to know our kids and we approach them differently. And, and, and that's part of the way our um, relationship with them is. So when and it always, you know, you know, from having two kids, people will say, you know, is it or people who don't have kids will ask me. So is it true? Somebody asked me this the other day. I don't know if it was one of my students or one of my clients, but they said, is it true that you have a favorite child? You know, do you have a favorite 
child, you know, does when you, oh, maybe it was my oldest daughter who just had a baby because she can't she imagine. She wanted, yeah, she wanted, to, <laughs> yeah, she wanted me to say that, but she said, do, is it, do you find that you, you know, cause she can't, she can't imagine the way she feels about her baby now feeling like that again. And how do you, you know, choose, right? That's what she's thinking. And I said, no, you don't have a favorite because there are certain things about you that I absolutely love and adore and certain things about your sister I love and adore. And there are, you know, there's no way to say this is the best child and this is the one that's under. It just, there's, there, you just have to, and I realize I'm matching them, at, meeting them at their personality style, and that's how I find my favorites in each of them. You know what I'm saying? Like what you do with your kids. Absolutely. And, and what there's an expression, a model is a tool for the mind. And what you're doing is subconsciously you've understood this. You've grasped the fact that you have to treat them differently because they are different people. But so many parents, and, and we do this as spouses, we, managers do this, they treat everybody the same. And that mm. just doesn't really work. Mm -mm. You, you can have one child and say, well, how come they grew up in this home and they don't have any issues? What's, what's up with this one? Yeah, because that child, their personality was valued and honored. And the other person, the other child was told, you need to change and be more like your sister, yeah. be more like your brother. Yeah, oh, no wonder Horrible thing to say. <laughs> it's right. just no horrible. Trying yeah. to change them. And we're not even say, doing it consciously. We're doing it subconsciously with with creating expectations and telling them what they should be doing. But when you understand the styles, it gives you a mental framework to think, okay, here's this style. Here's their gifts. Let's honor that. This child is completely different. I can't expect them to do the same things, achieve the same things, work the same way. I can't communicate them to this in the same way. And that's the power of, of understanding this is it allows us to adapt to them. Oh, so valuable, completely so valuable. I want to, we're going to take another quick break, but when we come back, I want to talk about relationships, both friendships and most importantly, significant other relationships and how we can use knowing the styles to our advantage. And also I'm in the dating scene, so I want to talk about styles and dating and how to approach that and how, you know, what you recommend knowing who, who I am now so and um, then we're going to talk about your books and how people can get a hold of you so we're going to be right back after this last message do you experience digital eye strain from too much blue light exposure from digital screens Baxter blue glasses are not your average frames these blue light lenses filter 80% of the highest energy blue light eliminating 99% of glare the past year, we've all been glued to our devices more than ever, and never did I think, as a health and fitness professional, would I be overexposed, but now all of my sessions are on Zoom. Our exposure to digital light has soared, and our eyes and our sleep are suffering as a result. Baxter Blue is also a force for good, and they provide a pair of reading glasses for someone in need for every pair sold. This is eyewear built for our digital age, and Baxter Blue is giving our listeners right now 10% off your next purchase of blue light sleep or kids' glasses. Just click the link in our show notes for your exclusive discount. This is the sign you've been waiting for to invest in blue light glasses. I know you will love your Baxters, and I know that you will feel the difference. <laughs> Okay, we're back. No more, no more breaks. We're back. So I'm most I'm curious. I know we touched on it a little bit earlier, but I'm I'm curious about relationships um, with friends and mostly with spouses and whether or not. I mean, this is probably a good marriage counseling tool. I would think to, to use marriage counseling so people understand who you are um, and you understand who you are, so you relate to each other in a much more civil, should we say, way. Um, I uh, also am interested in, you know, there are some things that you just go, gosh, if I knew that, I wouldn't be divorced, you know, <laughs> and stuff like that. I mean, how does, how does this, how is it very important in, let's, let's just start with spouses or significant other relationships, knowing this, your style. 
I think probably the statement I hear more than any other is, I wish I knew this before. And the, the second part of that sentence is usually before I had children or before I got married. <laughs> so you're absolutely right. If understanding this, it, what it does is it allows us to stop judging others. So for me, I'll give you an example. For me, I'm the parrot. My wife is an owl. And when we got married, look, there were, there were so many systems. There were so many processes that she had. She didn't think she had any, but clearly there is a definitive way you set the dining room table at Thanksgiving. There is a very specific way that you, you load the dishwasher. There is a very specific way that towels get put away in the closet. As the parrot, I didn't have as many specific ways. <laughs> it was like, yeah, things work out. You put it away, you set the table, it is what it is. And I can remember at first, I didn't know these styles. And, and I kept thinking to myself, what's the difference? Why does it matter? And, and at first it created some conflict. And, and now, and, and it, once I learned the styles, it, uh, that drama went away. It was like, oh, that's just your owl style playing out. And that's okay. Because she adds structure to my world. Mm -hmm. I add a level of spontaneity to hers. And so we each add something different, but we don't judge each other. And that's the problem that when you don't understand the styles in relationships, we often judge the other person. Why do they do this? This drives me crazy. Why do they need to do it that way? Well, they do it that way because that's their personality. That's just who they are. So we married them because they were different and they brought something unique and interesting. And then we marry them and we think they should just adapt and change to be mm -hmm. like us. Mm -hmm. That doesn't work. Mm -hmm. we, once you understand the styles, the judgment goes away and that gets replaced with acceptance. So is it important for, so if you understand the styles and you know who you are and you know who your significant other is, is it important for them to know that too, who they are and who you are? So they um, understand why you, let's say you're reacting the way or doing, you know, aren't as organized as them, let's say. So should, is it important for us to have this discussion with our, with our significant okay. other? I have so many people who say to me that the birds have become the language of their home, <laughs> that that they'll they'll listen to one of my books, which is the, the Chameleon, which is a series of fables, and they'll literally get in the car and they'll listen to the audiobook and they'll listen to one of the fables for 10 minutes and then they'll talk about it for the next hour. They'll be like, ah, this is what happens with your father or my, my father-in-law, your mother, or look what we're doing with our children. And it becomes the conversation because the birds give a language to the personality styles. And if you can have that as the conversation with a spouse, it's so powerful because it just takes something that's so complicated, human behavior, and it brings it down to something that's usable. Right, I could see it de-escalating some conflict, you know, whether you're trying with your spouse to de-escalate a situation or you have a go-between like a therapist or somebody in the room, but I can see it. Do you work with therapists to help them understand? Yes, you do. Yeah, yeah and my wife's a therapist, actually. Oh. She uses birds all the time. And, and oh. a lot of therapists introduce the birds as a common language for partners to be able to have the conversation so that they can have a sense of, okay, this is your eagle. This is your dove. Your eagle is being very blunt and direct. Your dove is being very sensitive and is offended by the eagle. Your eagle tells you exactly what they want. The dove expects you to automatically know what you want because mm. you've been married for 20 years you should know <laughs> and sometimes the eagle's like well how am i supposed to know if you don't tell me so by having this language of the birds it, it just creates a very simple dialogue a, a way of having the conversation and look happy couples know how to argue and and when you understand the birds it doesn't become negative conflict it becomes constructive conflict that doesn't even feel like conflict it just feels like hey that was a useful constructive conversation oh that's very cool so how would that come so getting back of course to me again but how does that play out like in the dating scene because you don't really you know right away you sort of I now can identify what my date is. You know, I always, always say, well, they're alpha, they're shy, they're this, they're that. But now I can kind of relate them to the bird styles. 
Um, but there, you know, obviously I'm not going to have that conversation with them once I've identified them and I know what I am. How does that? You could. Well, 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 yeah, that that would be, that's interesting. I could try that. I could try it. Yeah. (laughs) I mean, you know, I, I think I was doing, you know, you, when you're dating, you really broadly, you're like, oh, he's really funny or, oh, he's really sensitive or, you know, um, and that you know that's how we identify with the type of person that they are because it's initial you know what i mean it's such a quick read and um how could i use this to my advantage aside from talking to them about it yeah Yeah. well there's two there's two things first thing is you have to be true to yourself there's sometimes we have a very private version of us and then a public version don't try to say to yourself oh People are attractive to somebody funny. I'm going to try to be funny. Yeah, you know what's going to happen? When they marry you, they're going to get the private version of you, the real version Mm. of you, and you're not going to be the first date version of you. And so be who you are. If they don't like that and you don't connect to them, you just saved yourself a lot of hassle. So don't try to be something else. Uh, And then the second thing is understand what makes you happy. What is it that is really important to you? Maybe you're the dove and you say, I really like someone who takes charge. I don't love making big decisions. I want to be in a relationship with somebody who's a confident person. They're direct and assertive. They're willing to make the decisions. You may be an eagle and say, I I just like being around people who just are more caring and compassionate, and they just add something to my world that that maybe I don't display as much as, as they would. So you can use the styles as a way of trying to figure out what type of person are you really looking for? And look, your, your goal in, in that first date is to weed out somebody who isn't the right person. Hopefully they're, they're perfect and that'd be fantastic, <laughs> but understand yourself. Don't try to change yourself mm-hmm. and know what you're looking for. And if you know the styles, you'll see if they fit what you're looking for very quickly. Well, this breaks it down better for me, I have to say, because like I said, I was categorizing them. You know, uh, I, I'm what I would call an alpha, you know, before now having the birds to, to break it down for me. And I know I'm looking for another one, you know, because I don't want to be the leader or taking over or making all the plans. And, you know, I want there to, I want it to be on the equal side. But at the same time, I want some empathy, compassion, you know, um, enthusiasts. I want, you know, somebody who can uh, be upbeat and, and, and funny. I love funny, but not forced. So you're right. I mean, I'm really, it's, it's, it's tricky. It's really tricky. Well, and but think about what you're describing. So what you're saying is, okay, I know what I'm looking for. And what you just described is a parrot Eagle combination. Someone who's funny and personable and has that intuitive emotional connection but also is take charge and assertive and direct and calls it like it is if you you weren't describing an owl dove who is very soft-spoken very reserved very quiet takes a longer time to make decisions so notice as you're even talking about it you're framing out what style is a good fit for you and that and that's great because that makes it easier you have a sense of style but the birds just give it a language you're already doing it just having the language of the birds makes it simple. Yeah, I love that. I love the way it breaks down. We are running out of time, and I want you to talk about your books and how people can access them, how people can work with you if they want to, how they can learn more about everything that we talked about today, and anything that you've got coming up that you want to share with the audience real quick. So the books, the first one was Taking Flight, and it was like writing one long fable about the birds. Uh, and then it had a section, okay, now how do you use it in your life? Uh, the the second book, The Chameleon, is a collection of 22 fables. It was like writing, the first one was like writing a movie. The second one was like writing a season of a sitcom with 22 episodes. Oh. And each one teaches a totally different lesson of how do you use this in your life. Uh, and so they're on Amazon and in Audible. You can uh, you can pick them up there. And what I think the thing that I'm most excited about is I just released a new kids profile where kids take the assessment. They get to see what's their superpower, what makes them special. And then their parents get a section in the report that says, now here is how you parent that child. I love it. Teachers also get a section which says, how do you teach or coach or guide that child? So my goal is to not just 
teach it to people once they're in a company, but bring it bring it directly to children and help children right from the beginning understand the four birds. So that is that is my goal, not just to bring it to adults, but to start really bringing it to children. And, I, and I'll have a new book coming out later this year, uh, a fable for children about the four styles. Too. Wow, good for you. You're doing some really, really, like I said, valuable, fantastic work. I love it. Say your website so people can uh, go directly to it. I know you have a couple of websites, but how they can maybe access yeah. the books. If, if they want to learn about uh, the training programs that, that Take Flight Learning, my organization offers, it's Take Flight Learning com and you can see all the assessments are there profiles books and training programs that we offer fantastic now i'm going to have you leave us with final words thoughts wisdom just final quick words that you would like yeah. the audience to hear i would say don't impose your personality on others think about your style think about who they are and treat them the way they need to be treated don't treat them how you want to be Good one. Thank you. Thank you so much for your time, Eric. Thank you. I really appreciate it. I think you're doing some wonderful work, like I said. I think it's important. I love your enthusiasm about it, too. You're well, definitely you so a parrot. So <laughs> wait right parrots, there. Yes, that's what happens. <laughs> exactly. It's a great. See how fast that conversation went, too? Um, I, and I want to thank you, my audience, for joining us today. I hope you got some value as well out of this conversation. But I want you to keep going out and having conversations that connect to a healthier you. So bye, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.